I would like to start this talk by thanking SPID for the honor to give this prestigious Bill Marshall lecture. I would like to talk also all my close friends, Corinne Levy, Clarence Sigris, Rondagan, and so many others who have supported me since many years. Is this slide present my conflict of interest? After completed my pediatrician studies, I had the opportunity and the particularity to be both private, private ambulatory pediatric clinician, taking care of very common infection and giving vaccine. And I was as well as the antibiotic referent in my hospital, the first one in my country, and my office at hospital was in bacteriologic lab. This bacteriologic lab was also the Pneumococci National Reference Center. Before the 90, in France, as in many countries, ambulatory pediatricians were excluded from research. No one had clearly excluded them, but they were not included in any research project. Clinical studies were performed in the hospital by academic. Taking advantage of my double cape with a, a group of good friends, we have created a non-academic, non-hospital-based, independent research group active. And we performed the first French clinical trial studies in ambulatory setting. We, why we have to consider that research in ambulatory pediatric setting is fundamental. First of all, community acquired infection are a continuum. The bacteria and viral species involved can induce severe, moderate, or mild disease. The best example is pneumococcus. And pneumococcal impression infection are represented as a pyramid, the same serotype, the same li lineage could be recovered from carriage to meningitis. Furthermore, community acquired infection represent a large part of the activity of pediatrician. Diagnosis, treatment, prevention, primary care, emergency department, and hospital departments. Outpatient use of antibiotics dramatically impact antibiotic resistance, leading to infection management more difficult, notably for severe infection. Some vaccines for which the initial main objective was to reduce severe disease have major additional impacts on less severe disease and also overturning the carriage. Trying to study the bacterial and clinical epidemiology of organisms so, such as Pneumococcus, Streptococcus pyogen, E. coli, involved in the large spectrum of CIE, requires a focus on both the ambulatory setting and on the hospital. The SARS-CoV-2 pandemic remained us that it is the same situation for many viral infections, such as RSV or influenza viruses. Since this very old study on rapid antigen test in pharyngitis, our research group has continued to work on community acquired infection by exhausting five French Republic presidents, resulting in more than 400 publications. I think that is the first innovative paper that we have published is this one. Our research group was the first to try to assess the ecological impact on composition nasopharyngeal flora and antibiotic resistance. With a network of almost 100 primary care pediatricians, 
we obtained three nasopharyngeal samples from children with acute otitis media. Before antibiotic treatment, two to five, six days after the end of treatment, and one month after. As you can see in this table, if the carriage rate of pneumococci were dramatically reduced, it is not exactly the same for H flu. The carriage rates of Haemophilus influenzae are relatively few influenced by antibiotic. For Pneumococcus, is the percentage of resistant strain among the remaining pneumococci after antibiotics are increased, the risk for a given child to carry resistant pneumococci are not really increased. Since this study, all our studies on acute otitis media have included nasopharyngeal fluorous sample before and after treatment. Among them, we performed two double-blind studies using the same antibiotics, five days versus 10 days, in very young children with acute otitis media. Five-day regimens as are not as successful than 10 days. The tolerability is not different according to the duration of treatment, and the impact on nasopharyngeal flora are completely comparable. 18 years after, Obermann and collaborators have reproduced this study and, and have found exactly the same results. The expertise acquired in this area, several thousand of nasopharyngeal samples collected in 10 years, allowed us to perform a pivotal study on nasopharyngeal pneumococcal carriage before and after PCV7 then PCV13 implementation. This study was a post-licensing commitment requested by EMA, although other studies in many parts of the world reported similar results for the PCV impact, none were comparable in terms of design, duration, nearly 20 years, and number of patients enrolled, more than 20,000 patients. In order to enrich the proportion of children carrying pneumococci, we choose to enroll onril acute otitis media with high fever and or otalgia. This figure shows the follow-up of pneumococcal carriage during the study period. As you can see, the overall pneumococcal carriage rates are only slightly redu reduced. PCV7 serotypes are nearly completely disappeared. PCV13 serotypes have increased during the PCV7 period and decreased after the implementation of PCV13. However, the rate at, at, of non-PCV vac uh, vaccine, vaccine type have increased, and now most children carry mainly non-vaccine type. At the beginning, taking advantage that the PCV7 implementation was slow in France, we were able to compare pneumococcal resistance according to the vaccination status and the antibiotic use. As you can see in this table, the resistance rate was increased by resident, recent use of antibiotic and no history of vaccination, vaccination. As you can see also, if patients receive antibiotics and are not vaccinated, the rate of penicillin resistant strains uh, 
are very high. This figure taken from a recent study of my group shows the evolution of pneumococcal antibiotic resistance after PCV7 and PCV13 implementation. The implementation of these two vaccines resulted in reduction of pneumococcal resistance, but as you can see, in this time, theory analysis, since four years, a slight increase of resistance is observed. However, the link of ambulatory network to hospital networks was crucial to determine the multifaceted impact of pneumococcal vaccination implementation, the ambulatory network with the hospital-based surveillance system was established. We created with the French Group of Pediatric Infectious Disease network for surveillance of the other levels of the pyramid of pneumococcal infection, bacterial meningitis, IPD, pneumonia, and more than 230 hospital pediatricians and 170 microbiologists were involved in this surveillance. The active GPIP meningit network took, took, took place in 01. As you can see in this time series analysis, recently we observed an increase in the incidence of pneumococcal meningitis, despite high coverage with PCV13, mainly due to the emergence in France of serotype 2023F. In the same idea, with the same team, we follow the confirmed X-ray pneumonia, visiting pediatric emergency room in 10 hospitals. This figure shows a reduction of pneumonia diagnosed during five years and after a stability. The difference between the increase in meningitis and the stability in pneumonias could be explained by the fact that non-vaccine type are often involved in meningitis and less frequently in pneumonia. The size of our IPD and carrier cohort allow us to describe invasive disease potential several years after PCV13 implementation. This figure show the invasive disease potential after PCV13 implementation. Serotype 1 and 12 health have indisputably the highest IDP. Among the 10 serotypes with significant high disease potential, the majority are vaccine type. By contrast, among the 20 serotypes with significant lower disease potential, only three uh, are represented in PCV7 and PCV13 vaccine. In all countries, the PCV13 implementation was followed by reduction of IPD. The aim of this particular study was to assess a change in clinical presentation of IPDs after PCV13 implementation and the clinical spectrum of each serotype. As you can see in this figure, the, the spectrum before and after PCV13 implementation uh, were different. This is due to that vaccine type, and you said more frequently pneumonia than non-vaccine type, and particularly for serotype 1, 7F, and 19A. Also, among non-vaccine type, those with highest disease potential and you said more, more pneumonia than those with low disease potentials. All these differences are statistically, stat, statistically significant. Okay, 
The research group that I have created 30 years before was also interested in many other pediatric infection and pathogen implicated in community acquired infection. Group A Streptococcus, E. coli, but Staphylococcus aureus and other. I want to show some of some instructive examples. For example, we have shown that six, six day amoxicillin BIG treatment gives the same results that the historical 10 day regimen BIG with spin V. We have performed a two randomized controlled study giving the same results. And I don't know why this duration treatment is used only in France, even if no study have, have come to invalidate these results. We performed also several studies on rapid antigen tests in pharyngitis because it is a good occasion to reduce of antibiotic use. And we have studied particularly the factor influencing the test performance and the false positive results. Most of false positive tests compared to culture have PCR positive and co-colonization with staphylococcus aureus is frequent. We extended the use of rapid antigen tests in other common infections where gas were involved, such as perinary infection or paronychia. We studied in this situation not only the diagnostic accuracy, but also the change of care according to the result of rapid antigen tests. As you know, my country had in terms of antibiotic prescription, the particularities to have a high rate of prescription, but also frequent use of oral third generation cephalosporin. The consequences were a significant proportion of E. coli producing ESBL, notably in urinary tract infections. Since 10 years, for ambulatory patients with IOM, we follow not only nasopharyngeal flora, but also as ancillary study, we perform anal samples to follow this, phenomen this phenomenon. As you can see, the rate of E. coli producing ESBL are relatively stable, probably to the switch in antibiotic prescription for oral third generation cephalosporin to amoxicillin. I think that our studies have strongly influenced the change in French guidelines for antibiotic prescription. When COVID-19 pandemic has occurred at the, at the beginning of these years, we knew very few about the pyramid of clinical manifestation of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Rapidly, we knew that the pyramid in children was different, smaller, and the distribution of the different floor are very different. Here again, the pre-existing network made it is possible very quickly to set up studies in children consulting at the hospital and in the community. We were able quickly to show that RT-PCR positivity rates were significantly lower than in adults and very few children in the community were infected with SARS-CoV-2. My last topic is a setup of network dedicated to a real-time surveillance of community acquired infection in French ambulatory care, the PARI network. The PARI network is an hybrid system combining trained investigators and big data. The network includes more than 100 pediatricians distributed in France. These investigators are motivated 
steadily trained in pediatric infectious disease and using rapid diagnostic tests. The same so software was used for automated data extraction, leading to no additional data to handle that those required in the, in the daily practice. As you can see, we can follow as other network in France, influenza, bronchiolitis, and varicella, and the curves are very similar. But we can follow also many other diseases for which the diagnosis is more difficult and more frequently followed, such as acute otitis media, as you can see in this figure, the number of diagnostic, diagnostic of otitis media by year, gastroenteropharyngitis, but also urinary tract infection, pneumonia, enterovirus infection, etc. In conclusion, to summarize the main message of my lecture, first one, I compare my work as clinician researcher to that of Plugman, digging deeper and deeper furrows and opening new ones at the same time. The deeper you dig the furrows, the deeper you get, and more and more scientific questions arise. The second one, research in community-acquired infection is a, is a pulse with several nested puzzle pieces. I want to thank, to finish, all my co-investigator pediatrician repartited in all the French territory. And I want to show to you the picture of a small part of our team. Thank you very much for your attention.